So guys, what you can see now, Matt's uh, working on the relevant waste from the basins and from the shower trays at the moment, getting those sorted and drilled into the joist, ready for the plumber to come along and do the collections. What me and Phil are going to be working on, we've got a kitchen business coming here to do the measure next Wednesday, so they'll do the measure here. So what we're building is a load of stud work, so the actual stud work is going to look like this. These sections here, so they're actually built in sections. They'll be plasterboarded, obviously made out of wood, just to give you a little bit of an idea. And you can see that we've got this detail of stud work here, stud work here, stud work here, stud work here, and then here and here. And they're going to form actually like kind of built in wardrobe systems. So they actually then eventually look like this once it's all plastered and give this a beautiful detailing here the canopy this can look stunning so me and phil what we're going to do first is get the ceiling just one length all the way across and then return so we can actually get the fire line board all the way through so it's a continuous fire line board we won't put the stud work up to the timber we like to get all the fire line all the way through once we've done that we can then start marking out on the walls on the ceiling where all of this stud work comes to make sure it works perfectly now all the measurements that we've got from tom howley it's really important that the measures they've given us we have to take into account the actual thickness of the plasterboard and the skim. So the measurement they give us here, whatever we're dealing with, we need to make sure the timber's all trimmed, suited, to make sure we give them the specific measurements. All right, guys, so watch me and Phil crack it out today and a little bit tomorrow. One thing when you cut plasterboard, you should never use a pencil. That's what you need, knife. The good thing is I want a decent square edge, so obviously when I flick it like that, I'll do my cut there, because that's going to go into the corner of the wall. I always um, get the rasp to clean up, get a nice sharp edge on it. That's it. Is it worth us marking this stud out along here now, sweeping this off, marking this out and then working back, marking all that out? Do you want to use my new chalk line, Phil? Yeah, go on. Look at that. What a laser. Nice, isn't it? So what we've done there, guys, we just, the units are 600, but obviously with the dot and dab, we've got 25 mil. So we've come out 625. That's then the finish line of all the units and the plasterboard and all the stud pilasters that we're going to be building as well. So the next bit we're going to mark out. So we've marked out this line all the way across here, 625 mil, because that's the measurement there. See it there, 600 guys, 600, 600. So that's our line, okay. We then, um, all we've got to do then is mark then the front of these studs, where they're going to come. We then plumb these up, do the relevant measurements that we've got here. So the measurement from finished plaster to finished plaster there. You can see on the drawings itself, the actual line of the units comes all the way through here. But because of this soffit detail here, we've just noticed this soffit detail's got to come through because what you've got is the extractor hood which actually then comes past this 600 line. And then when you look at the drawing, what it's supposed to look like, like this, you can see the soffit line, which is underneath, which is going to carry the extractor here. You've got to make sure it comes through. So this is a detail, which then the cornice then goes on, but this has obviously got to protrude. We need to make sure we build the soffit all the way through, ready for the extractor to go in as well. So that first measurement, I'm going to do 1777. So let's mark up the wall now. I'll put a V on it like that. The one thing I won't do, I won't mark it all out there and put all the walls until I know it all works. That says 740 here, so that's the 740 measurement. That's my 15 mil, that's plasterboard and skim. Overall is 230, so I then come in 15 mil. So basically I'm just copying this to make sure it all works all the way down the line. 
And we've actually, by the time the dab goes on, it actually works perfect. Look at that, that actually to the mill. Because obviously what we needed is 1700 to that pencil point here. That one there, so if it goes to the wall, there. Look at that, 1700, get in. Look at that, Alice has built this beautifully. So what I'm just checking now, you see the laser line, that's the blue line where we need to come. That's on the money, Phil. So what I'll do, I'll mark this up here, Phil. And then we'll ping it, mate, yeah? There we go, lovely. Just marking out studs, not more marking out the plasterboards, don't want those, because obviously we'll be building the frame to that. That's it, so all I'm going to do now is run the lines all the way through and up, that's it, I'm away. What I might do is actually try and get a further line on that now, so I can get the laser, make it easier to make sure I get the laser absolutely spot on. You can see what I'm doing, look, so it's so easy this is why I do it this way, that's why I like to take my lines all the way through, because you can see if you don't set this laser up correctly, See now I've got the laser on the pencil line. Probably just need to tweak it a little bit like that. It's dead in centre then. And it looks pretty good all the way down there, doesn't it? Well, have a look, let's see how good it is. So look, you can see it's just running here. See look, that's the thing you see when you try and do a crosshair line like, look at that. It needs to go that way slightly, mate. That's about it there, mate. What I'll do is I'll put myself a marker here. So the only thing I'm going to do now is just check up there because obviously you could see when I had it before it was good this much to drift even though you think you've got it perfect here always best to line it on down here as well. Yeah so I've got to tweak it this way a little bit. Bill can you do your magic? <coughs> just got to go that way five mil mate. There you go perfect. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's what I saw best to check, guys. Just gonna mat the ceiling as well now. I know that I'm happy with that. Now don't forget, guys, we've got 15 mil with plasterboard and skim here as well, so I'm gonna marker that. The reason I've recessed, you see this, this is the thermal insulating board and it's just slightly proud on this. So all I've done is just recess the top of it. Probably don't have to go so deep on the next one. But that's why I've done this, it allows me then to push up nice tight to the wall and keep it there. And the reason I'm putting the backstop on there, it means that the blade, this part of the blade, the fullest depth will then get to this uh, at the back, save me messing around trying to clean a load of it out. You see, I'll stop it there. If I put this material right to the back here, it means that I wouldn't be able to get the full blade. That's why it's really important to put the full blade here. It saves me then messing around with that later. So I'll, let me just show you the difference. Put that right to the back. See the difference, guys? 
So it means now I have to do a load of work here when all I've got to do is put, get a bit of stock on the back, like that. Now, wherever there's a knot, I always use the most of the saw to take it out because it just makes it easier. All I've got to do now is cut my lengths of timber, put them together, I'm away. All I'm going to do is put a back piece and a front piece. I won't bother with the central piece, don't need it because they're only 600mm wide, half inch board. They're on the vertical, absolutely fine. Yeah, it will go, mate. It's all good fun, isn't it? All good fun, mate. Uh is that a John meter, is it? It is a meter. I thought so. I bet you. <laughs> Come on, let's see that's how. Come on, let's see how close you get to a meter. Come on then. Picture that from there to there. Where? Go on, pull it out. That, that's a meter. What do you reckon, mate? 1100. Oh, oh I'm going to do a meter now. You know what they say, it's better looking at it than for it. It's ready. <laughs> Alright, that's about a meter there, mate. Yeah. Go on then. The, the, the under is the 10%, isn't it? Right, mate, what you got? 1100! Yeah, I wouldn't put the noggins in. I think what we should do is get the ceiling in here, put the timber down here like that, timber down this side, can't we? That'll then take the weight of the whole of the thing then, won't it? Which would be better, so we just use eight bits again, yeah. screw it to the side, but then get this absolutely cock on this way. Yeah. You know, it just means that we can screw through the top, screw through the top and get absolutely... Can't I mean, it's pretty good now, mate, to be honest. It's a new one, Phil. Yeah, yeah I pushed the boat out, I thought... I thought I'd go for it, mate. <coughs> yeah, go for it, go on, go for it, ping it. There you go, look, you can see it, you can see it. That's that one. There you go. Boom. Oh, is that the laser? Yeah, anywhere you can get that laser, right, isn't it, Phil? Yeah. You love it, aren't you? <laughs> what you got, Phil? Uh, 97. 97? Yeah. I've got 94 there, mate. 94. Yeah, you got 97, mate. Something wrong with that laser. <laughs> Not the laser. That's how nice our clients are. Tom and Tina, get in. And they've not like skimped. They've actually now pushed the bat out. Look, heavenly whipped cream with it as well. <laughs> oh, God, blimey, that went nuts, Phil. Mmm. Mark and Phil love laser levels. I like them to a point, and uh, they are good, but I do like go back to the old school, get a piece of timber on here, line across it, then check it with the timbers, and then I know it's really, really true then, so just the way I roll, sorry. So I've got timber coming across here, guys, so it's just a little bit of a check. Look at that, just beautiful, just touching that back of that line. That's how we want it. You know, somebody said to me, one of the, one of the very satisfying things is this up here, look. When you get the two timbers together like that, and they're nice and smooth all the way through, and then you cut that one, you feel the both ends, and they feel absolutely spot on. It's very satisfying for me, that is. So 
a check either side like that. Oh, that's absolutely spot on. Nice. Look, so I'm feeling here, feeling here, absolutely beautiful. The one thing I always do, guys, I never just use that end. I always clean the end off. It's just that I've always been taught. Never start with the raw timber like that. That measure, I've always just trim it. The reason I'm doing this just makes it easier when I come to screw it all up. Make it so much simpler. Because obviously this is the wall side, because we're at wall, that's the right hand side there. So what I'll do now, I can see my markers. I'm just gonna get my screws ready to go. I suppose I could puzzle a bit, but because of the canopy, I'd rather screw it. Love this festival, don't think there's a better cool out there. I put them there now, so it just means that when I can put them there, the line them up, that's it, done. So let's get all the screws in first. So we're here, Monday morning, got a big week in front of us, obviously we're getting close to Christmas, got a lot, a lot of stuff to do before Christmas, to make sure we keep the clients happy. And yes, England have lost. Oh, it's Harry Kane! Cannot answer the call! Portugal lost, didn't Portugal they, mate? Portugal lost, yeah. In the series! Oh, sorry. So who's now in the final World Cup? Who's in there now? Morocco. Morocco. Japan. The French. The French, yeah, the French. Down with the French. the French. Do you know, a lot of people say to us, Tony, do you ever make mistakes? Yes, we always do make mistakes now. We just highlight one of the mistakes that we've made, just rushing, I suppose. What we've got is the plasterboard here. It's got to come off, and then there's a detail, which you can probably just see here, guys, that actually projects out. And uh, for some of no reason, I got it in my head, it was just this bit here. Um, but no, so what we've got to do is got to take this off, and because of the mitre point that comes off here, at this point, we've got to take 25 mil or 12 and a half mil this side, and 12 and a half mil that side, and then run the plasterboard through. And then obviously the same with this frame here, take off 12 and a half mil, 12 and a half mil, 25 mil all told, then pull the frame forward, make sure the plasterboard's run up, because then when the mitre for the cornice in for this front canopy then goes in, it'll be absolutely spot on, because we don't want the mitre to be offset by 12 and a half mil, do we? So we've made it. <laughs> so, but you know, it's life, at least we found that now, instead of the day that the mesh is gonna happen. And I've got Igor, morning Igor, he's gonna be up there uh, working away, taking the last bits of mastic off and silicon off there, and then we'll blue grit all of that wall there. We're gonna blue grit all this wall here, get that done. The client has done the additional work. They're now gonna put a wood burner in here, so you're gonna see the wood burner from that side of the room and this side of the room in the kitchen. Uh, so it's coming on really well, and then the additional stuff, we lifted up the relevant steels. The electrician came in, they're getting their relevant bits done. So it's all coming together really. We've covered the windows, just give them a bit of protection because we've got all the stuff going over them. Got a blue grit that wall as well actually, blue grit that wall to uh, obviously give it a really good key. 
So that's got to be done. Plaster is going to be getting on the reveals and everything for us, so uh, which is uh, going to be definitely key to so how we can crack on. The plumber coming doing his bits, doing the connections. So let's get on, let's, let's crack on. Good friend Neil is uh, always ahead of me. He's already cut off the end of this nozzle. It's really, really good when you've got people who have been in the game, they're like literally forward thinking. So even before I've even got to the tube and explain it to you, he's chopped off the end. So basically what we do is whenever you get a tube, it always comes with this bit on the end here. Uh, we always chop this off because it makes it easier for the gun uh, to move around in though. This is actually a really nice fancy gun. I mean, it's one that uh, Mark's, yes. <laughs> And I've got to note, it's not mine, it's Mark's actually. So he's excelled here. I mean, how much did he set you back, mate? 20 quid. 20 quid. I mean, that's quite expensive for a skeleton gun, but I'll tell you what, I've used this, all right, guys. And if you're in the market for a skeleton gun, this is the dog's doodah of guns, I've got to say. It continually gives you even pressure all the time, doesn't it, mate? And that's what I really like about it. Whereas a lot of skeleton guns, they don't really do that, whereas this definitely does. So the other thing I do like about it, it's uh, the way this all moves around and twists. Because obviously, as you're doing your application, sometimes you might need to do that and turn. So it works quite nicely, actually. I can see why it's 20 quid though, Mark. Where'd you get it from, MKM or somewhere else? Amazon. There you go, Amazon does it again. 
Neil has already prepped the uh, the gun and the actual shell. The reason I love this product, it's a very powerful adhesive. The other thing I do like, I don't have to mess around trying to uh, set the gauge. This is already, because this is purely a grab adhesive. I'm gonna use this because of the qualities of this. I'm gonna run it across the steel line up here. You can see I've got a plasterboard, fire line plasterboard coming through here. And you might be able to see, we just ping lined it here. Look, there's the chalk line, chalk line there short line over there and what I'll do is I'll end up just putting a couple of beads of this along this steel here will allow the board to sail past by about 50 mil and then because this is such a strong adhesive it grabs so instantaneously and the strength of this is amazing I've used other products but for me I always come back to this one it's a really really good product that's the board being marked out here now I'm going to get that cut out now and then we're going to get the board up and get it done now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put three beads along here Yep. That's it. That grab adhesive. Tell you what, look at that. That's absolutely solid, that is. Loving that. So you can see with the grab adhesive, I know that will be absolutely solid when it goes off. The one big thing as well, you have to make sure that you fire line the whole of the ceiling when you've got loads of steels, and especially with the two story extension and above as well. So uh, that's why we're using the, the fire line obviously around this kitchen area here, put a lot of fire line there as well. Uh, but we're cracking on well, we've got the kitchen people coming in at about 10 o'clock to do a measure, uh, which is great. They've got enough to do what they need to do. Cracking on, getting it all ready for Christmas. Hey you beautiful people, another beautiful day. So if you enjoy the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell, so every time we upload a video, you'll be notified. So have an awesome week. See you soon guys on the next vlog.